This may be one of, if not the first time, that a tribe never even touches tribal council before the merge, as Yasa and Ua were the only tribes to even send people home pre-merge at all. So, yeah, we're dealing with some pretty uh, high-level um, players here. Uh, very, very... Um, really uh, memorable players are just good players, so let's just get into it. I can't say that Sydney was really a bad player. I mean, even though she was the first Luvu boot, she also was the merge boot, so it's not like she's in the Hall of Shame at all. She just didn't really play much. She was picked for a few twists, like, but nothing ever really came of it. She was, wasn't was really in any position to go, like, all pre-merge, and that, uh, that, not that it mattered because Luvu wasn't going anywhere anyways. It, it wasn't until the merge that her name really started to get thrown around um, as new alliances formed and old bonds were broken, and she would have been safe if it wasn't for that turn back time twist and then after the fake idol play by Xander you know people were scrambling changing plans left and right names are going off all over the place as were the votes and when the dust settled it just was Sydney who had accumulated the most votes which sort of made sense because like I, her name was getting thrown around a lot before council but it was just a fitting end to a kind of meh player. Don't get me wrong, Heather was a great competitor. She greatly deserved her fourth place finish, and I wouldn't even call her a floater or a coaster either. She did struggle a bit in challenges especially, but her spirit was unbreakable, and she kept fighting until the bitter end. On top of that, she seemed to be very well liked in almost every situation she was in, keeping her safe deep into the merge, where she did form a strong alliance with Erica and others, uh, but especially her and Erica were kind of like the, the two, like the, the duo. Um, you know, and that pushed her even further into the game, and however, her downfall is very sad, though. But basically, Xander won final immunity, right, and chose to save Erica, sending Heather and Deshaun to fire making, where she pulled ahead of him very quickly, only to choke at the same moment that Deshaun came back to win, so, yeah. Definitely one of the most inspiring, if not the most inspiring, uh, player all season. Nasir literally learned English watching Survivor, which is really impressive, considering Survivor tends to use the same restricted vocabulary with a lot of slang and terminology exclusive to just the survivor realm now that being said it probably did help that whenever people whisper on survivor there are subtitles so he could not only hear how words uh, sounded but also see how they were spelled so it's almost kind of like learning to speak and read english at the same time i'm not saying that that's how he learned it um i'm just kind of trying to uh see like how someone could um, learn English, like, while watching Survivor, because it's really cool that that's how he learned it. But anyways, this guy was a legend. I mean, uh, he held his weight well in challenges, but, uh, he was also a skilled provider, very often gathering fruits for his tribe and assisting in many other ways. Uh, he was also a good searcher, as he did find the final part of the three-way immunity. Probably his most iconic moment, though, was in the episode where Luvu does try to throw immunity to get out Erica, and he doesn't really catch on, just goes beast mode in the challenge. See, Luvu couldn't even throw a challenge that, uh, couldn't even a challenge couldn't even throw a challenge when they wanted to that's how stacked they were now unfortunately he did make some poor decisions come the merge i mean only a couple episodes into the merge in the series does start to kind of campaign against heather for whatever reason uh when especially when he was like not in that part of the he was not in like the majority alliance um and only a couple episodes yeah and so uh Erica decides to vote with the Majority Alliance to keep Heather safe because of this, and so they did vote out Nasir, uh, I think only, like, two episodes into the merge, uh, even though there was a tie at first, because for some reason Shan decided to use the extra vote that I don't know why she had to, I don't, I don't know why she did that to force a tie, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I still don't fully understand why she did that, uh, but nevertheless, Nasir was sent home, and it, it was sad, but at the same time, I, I, I doubted that he would have won anyways, it still would have been nice to see him go further than that, though. See here, Deshaun was a player that was also hyped up at first, but instead of him going out shockingly early, he just sort of played a meh game to me, I mean, that's just my opinion, there are probably plenty of people that, that he deserved to win, uh, which, yeah, but that, that's really the, the only reason why he's this high, because he did make it to the end, he could have won, as a matter of fact, he was the runner-up, because Xander didn't receive any votes, like, at all, um, I, I, and I gotta give him props to that, that he, you know, he made it to the end, but other than that, I'm not sure how much I liked his game, I mean, he started off very strong, I'd say he was one of the masterminds of Luvu, uh, in the pre-merge, but his game sort of derailed at the merge, I mean, a good vote flip story can really be an epic way to continue on the story, and, like, the plot line of a season, but for some reason, Deshaun's flipping to get out Shan, uh, and, like, just Deshaun, like, you know, uh, helping with that, um, it didn't really um, make it look as good as it made players of the past who have done something similar, which is kind of funny because Ricard did the exact same thing flipping on Shan, and that was, like, one of, like, his biggest, like, if he made it to the end, that would have been probably one of his biggest and strongest arguments was like, oh, yeah, I flipped on this person. 
Um, on top of that, he caught a lot of flack for dropping that truth bomb at Tribal Council when he was already a target, but the most impressive thing about Deshaun, I think, is that he was basically a cockroach. He was in so many sticky situations that he just kept shimmying out completely unscathed. I, I don't know, like, it's it's crazy. I, I'm not even just talking about, like, some of these votes, but um, he, he was also impacted, or more so almost impacted, by the do or die twist. This was at the final seven when those uh, who chose to compete in the immunity challenge and endurance one had to avoid being the first one out, and whoever would whoever was out first would have to compete in a one in three chance of survival challenge at a tribal council before the votes were even cast. So he went out first and that tribal had to pick between three identical boxes, two of which had a skull in them and one having a flame in it. He, if, if he picked the flame one, um, he would be safe. But if he picked the skull, well, you know, uh, sure enough, he did pick the flame and was safe, which then led to Liana getting voted out. And then at the final four, it was looking like he'd lose to Heather at fire making, but he came back swinging and managed to beat her there. So, you know, say what you want about Deshaun's gameplay. The dude was a fighter, and he definitely deserved to go as far as he did. I, I want to see him come back again, because I feel like, you know, this season was crazy, and I think he could do pretty well in another season. I just kind of noticed that before now, I barely talked about Danny, and I think I know why. Because Danny was above the noise. Danny was chill. Danny was polite. Danny was a good player all around. He didn't get involved in a ton of drama, even when it was his own alliance at the center of it. He could win challenges when needed, and was able to sail very far in the game despite his own alliance crumbling in front of him, and having no idols or advantages really to, to his name. Even at the final six where he was eliminated, there was a shred of hope for him at the possibility of a Ricard blindside, uh, but that went out the window when Ricard won immunity, of course. Um, by by now, he was one of the only outsiders of the new alliance remaining, and on top of that, he was also suspected for looking for and possibly finding an idol, so he was voted out there, but I really think this dude could have won it all, and I would, if I was a juror and he was at the final three, I probably would have voted for him, because he was just so likable, but he also, he wasn't like just someone that was like, oh, I made it to the end, but hi, I'm just super likable, right? Like, he, he wasn't like a Natalie White, he was... He, he was likable, but he, I think, also, I think, had enough mo uh, like moves and enough strategic to his name that he also could win on that, too. Yeah, I don't exactly know why Erica won Survivor 41. I think it's kind of a mixed, emo like, a, a, people have kind of mixed opinions about Erica. There are people that are like, bro, why did she win? And then there are people that are saying, like, oh, yeah, no, she, yeah, no, yeah, straight up, she was one of, like, the best players this season, um, but it, I, I think it's sort of, like, a Danny thing, like, I was confused and dissatisfied at first, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense that she won, I mean, Erica had a pretty solid underdog story, starting off uh, on the bottom of her tribe, to the point where Luvu was willing to throw immunity just to vote her out, but thanks to Nasir, she was able to stay safe until the merge, where she continued to play as the pariah, as, you know, she was one of the odd, one of the odd players out at that weird merge challenge, where the players were split in half, right before the turn back time twist and because of this she was sent to exile island where she sort of had time to reflect on what to do next and boy did she have stuff to do as jeff probes visited her on exile island with an hourglass and a mallet this was the turn back time twist and it basically meant that if she decided to smash the hourglass well, uh, the five people who had won that challenge uh, that she sat out of would now be vulnerable to getting voted out and the ones who lost would now be safe officially earning their spot at the merge she obviously decides to smash the hourglass as it means she'd be safe and, like, she really had nothing to lose at that point. Um, and she was unafraid of sh who she would take off in the process, which, I mean, hey, that took bravery, which that was definitely a winner move, if you ask me. And after that, she sort of took a step back, letting the main power players, the giants of the season, take each other out. And that's another thing that people do, the winners do all the time. They, you know, they might not be seen as, like, the biggest, like, you know, uh, like, juggernauts of the season, but they let the other people, the big, like, the, the you know, take themselves out for uh, for her um yeah and you know once the coast was clear of all the evies and the shans and such she formed an alliance with heather, heather who had always been her strongest ally along with xander and ricard which was a very smart as they were the two biggest competition threats so you at that point in the game you want them on your side um so that they're not going to go after you but at any time you could just take them out um you know, from here, she did aid them in voting out the remnants of that other alliance, and then took the shot at Ricard when the time was right. Xander decided to keep her safe, despite the urges from Deshaun and Heather that Erica was the biggest threat left in the game at that time. And if you saw Erica trying to start a fire, it would have been smarter of Xander, uh, smarter of Xander if he just didn't save her. The thing is, when you had that second coming of Ozzy like Xander, all of the moves Erica did, all of the things she did to get this far, didn't really seem as large. But... The jury sure did pick on it, so pick up on it. So 
Uh, they didn't pick on it. They picked up on it. Uh, so, you know, what does that say? Now, I'm not saying that Erica deserved to win over Xander, but part of my job when ranking these players is to explain why the winner won. Oh, you don't count! Well, that does it. That's Survivor 41. But this also brings us to the end of Season 3 of the Everything Bagel channel. Uh, I am not going to upload anything else after this. I've decided that this is the very last episode before New Year's. So, that means... Happy New Year's, guys. I will see you in 2022. Uh, we're we're going to keep cranking these videos out. Yeah, and uh, I have... Um, uh, I'm going to make it kind of my mission next year to uh, sort of diversify my content a little bit more. This year, there was a lot of Big Brother... Uh, yeah, a lot of Big Brother and a lot of Survivor and a lot of Mass Singer. And I love making videos on those. I'm not going to stop making videos on those. But I, I've always wanted to make videos on other things. And I, I kind of did do that a little bit this year. But I, I, want, I want more. I want to do more of that. So that's just kind of a little teaser of stuff that you could expect uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next year.